Salute! Welcome to Beginner's Latin Lesson 12. In this lesson I'll be introducing third declension Latin nouns. In previous lessons we introduced first and second declension Latin nouns, which are summarised in the following table. Femina, aqua, scriba are all examples of first declension nouns. Most first declension Latin nouns are feminine in gender. These feminine nouns not only define familial relations and roles which we would typically think of as female related in English, like poella, girl, filia, daughter, and femina, woman, but also concrete and abstract nouns which are not necessarily thought of as being gendered in English, but are in Latin. Examples are pharma, room or reputation, and aqua, which is water. There are also a number of masculine first declension nouns. These masculine nouns are occupations such as nauta, sailor, poeta, poet, incola, inhabitant, and pirata, pirate. First declension nouns are characterised by their A ending in the singular nominative and their AE ending in the singular genitive. First declension Latin nouns are either masculine or neuter. Masculine second declension nouns are dominus, vir, and puer and they end in us, r, and er in the nominative, and in the neuter, second declension, we have the um ending in the singular nominative. Both masculine and neuter second declension nouns have genitive singular forms which end in i. In this lesson, we will look at examples of third declension nouns, the genders of these nouns, how they decline, as well as examining the features that characterise these third declension Latin nouns. Here are eight third declension Latin nouns. Homo, homines, human, man, person. Mater, matris, mother, matron of a house. Miles, militis, soldier, knight. Nox, noctis, night, darkness, dream. Pater, patris. Father, parent, vox, vocis, voice, rex, regis, king, ruler, uxor, uxorus, wife, spouse, consort. What do these examples tell us about third declension nouns? First of all, we can see that one word, which we have frequently seen in, the past, in our past lessons, rex, is a third declension noun. We can also see that these examples cover a wide variety of nouns. We have relations like mater and pater and uxor, and we also have occupations like miles and rex. All genders, masculine, feminine and neuter, are also represented. Lastly, we can see that third declension nouns are characterised by the is genitive singular ending. If you look up a Latin noun in the dictionary and see that it has an is genitive singular ending, then 9 times out of 10 it will be a third declension noun. Next, we're going to cover how to decline third declension nouns. Let's take rex as our example since it's a noun that we've seen in previous lessons. We already know that it has a genitive singular form, regis, but what are its other forms and how do we make them? Here are all the endings for rex. We form the endings by taking the is off the genitive singular form to get the stem, R, E, G. We then add the appropriate endings. The endings are all written in purple. This gives us, for the singular forms, rex, regis, regi, regum, rege, rex. For the plural we have reges, regum, regibus, reges, regibus, Reges. I appreciate that some of these endings look very, very different from any of the second or first declension endings, but there are also a few similarities. Most noticeably, the accusative singular form ends in M and the accusative plural ends in S, as with first and second declension nouns. Also, the nominative and vocative forms are identical. Furthermore, although the dative and ablative forms are very different from anything that we've seen so far, they are the same as each other, which we would expect for first and second declension nouns. I understand that this might not be of much comfort, but my advice for learning these endings would be to cover them up and to see if you can recall them from memory. 
either by writing them down or saying them, and then checking your answers as you go along. Do this until you feel fairly confident that you can recognise all these endings. Here is another example, the noun miles. Pause the video and see if you can decline it. How did you do? For the singular forms we have miles, militis, militi, militum, milite, miles. For the plural forms we have milites, militum, militibus, milites, militibus, milites. The examples that we've seen so far for masculine and feminine third declension nouns, the endings for neuter nouns are slightly different. Look at this example, corpus. Like before, we take the is ending of the genitive singular form to create the stem, but the endings we add are slightly different. Notice that like with second declension neuters, third declension neuters have nominative, accusative and vocative plurals, which end in a. The nominative and accusative forms are also identical. The genitive, dative and ablative endings are exactly the same as those of masculine and feminine third declension nouns. So we have corpus, corporis, corpori, corpus, corpore, corpus, corpora, corporum, corporibus, corpora, corporibus, corpora. Here is another neuter third declension noun, nomen, meaning name or title. Pause the video and see if you can have a go at declining this. How did you do? We have for the singular forms, nomen, nomenis, nomeni, nomen, nomene, nomen. For the plural forms we have, nomena, nomenum, Nomenibus, nomena, nomenibus, nomena. Moving on, here are all the endings for third declension nouns. I have highlighted the rows for the nominative, accusative, and vocative endings. Because these have different endings for neuter and non neuter nouns. Next, we're going to look at one interesting subset of third declension nouns called I stem nouns. We have seen that the genitive plural of third declension Latin nouns ends in um. For third declension I stem nouns, the genitive plural ends in ium rather than um. For I stem neuter nouns, we also have ia endings in the nominative, accusative, and vocative cases. Furthermore, there are two types of I stem nouns mixed I stem, which only have a different form in the genitive plural and pure I stem, which show the I affix in multiple forms. Here are the I stem endings for masculine, feminine, and neuter nouns. Note that the IS accusative plural and the I ablative singular are alternative endings for masculine, feminine, pure I stems. Here are some third declension I stem nouns. Ars, artis, art, skill, craft. Kivis, kivis, citizen. Clades, Clades, destruction, hostis, hostis, enemy of the state, stranger, mors, mortis, death, nawis, nawis, ship, nox, noctis, night, darkness, dream, pass, partis, part, share, animal, animalis, animal, mare, maris, sea, exemplar, exemplaris, model, pattern, copy. Here is herbs, a feminine mixed I stem noun meaning city. Herbs is a mixed I stem noun so that I affix appears in the plural genitive form but all other cases decline in the same way as standard third declension feminine nouns. We have herbs, herbis, Erbi, erbem, erbe, herbs, erbeis, erbium, erbibus, erbeis, erbis, erbibus, erbeis. 
Here is animal, a neuter, pure eye stem. Here are its forms. Animal, animalis, animali, animal, animali, animal, animalia, animalium, animalibus, animalia, animalibus, animalia. Taurus is a feminine pure eye stem third declension noun. Here are its forms. Turem, turim, ture, turi, turis, tureis, turium, turibus, tureis, turis, turibus, tureis. As well as pure and mixed eye stem nouns, we also have some irregular third declension nouns. Here is one, wis which means force, power, or violence. Wies has the following forms. For the singular, we have wies, wies, we, whim, we, wies. For the plural, we have we race, wirium, wiribus, wires, wiris, wiribus, wires. The genitive and dative singular forms are italicised as they are rarely used. Here is another irregular third declension noun, senex, the word for an elderly man. We have in the singular, senex, senis, seni, senem, sene, senex. For the plural we have senes, senum, senibus, senes, senibus, senes. Recall the table which I introduced at the beginning of the lesson which showed the first and second declension nouns as well as some examples, the genders of the first and second declension nouns, their endings and their characteristics. Have a go and see if you can fill out the fourth column for third declension nouns from what we have learnt in this lesson. You might want to pause the video while you do so. How do you think you did? Thank you for watching this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it informative.